Okay? I remember, you know, when I used to blaze, right? I used to smoke, right? Herbs, you know what I mean? I smell some in here today. I'm not saying anybody, you know. They used to tell me, they used to say, yeah, you know, they used to say, you're killing your brain cells. You know what I mean? That's what the, the older people used to say. And, you know, okay. But that's neither here nor there. Does alcohol actually kill brain cells? Go ahead, bro. I heard that it, um, the THC and the other thing that's in it, it actually um, makes your cells grow. It doesn't kill it. So we, that's what I read. Yeah. That it makes it grow. Okay. That's, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Okay. You know what I mean? Show me. Bicycling. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm not gonna tell. I'm gonna leave that alone. You know what I mean? I'm gonna respect my audience. You know what I'm saying? Say so teach. I'm teach. You, you, you want me to jump on an herb? You said smoking keeps you young, right? Absolutely. Smoking what? <laughs> okay. Well. It's not weed. It's called cannabis. Well, anything you're taking into your lungs, right? Oh, we know that. It decreases the efficiency of your lungs, right? So what do your lungs do? Right. They, they breathe. What is it breathing? Oxygen, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so we, we can go into that, but what's in the oxygen? Hey, Break it down. Come on. What's in I just want to know, is it that? <laughs> you already know the transformation of it smoking is definitely 100%. All right, so if we all, if we all agree on all right. that. But you said smoking it. Right. I want to know about eating. What's the, what's, what's the effects of it, vice versa? What's, what's the benefit of it? Or right. if it has no benefit at all? Okay, well... It's definitely better for you to consume it than to smoke it. But you're saying it's not good for you at all. That's what you're saying. I'm saying it's not good for you at all. I'm all saying right. if there's some nutritional benefits that you would like to get from it, no, you'd rather it. consume it. Once you smoke it, it's toxic. Straight up. Okay. And whatever effects that you get from it, just in terms of uh, stimulation, mm -hmm. you know, or hallucinogenic. You know what I mean? Hallucination. Dad. Your brain itself can produce those very same chemicals. Mm. Every drug, whether it be cocaine, whether it be heroin, every, your brain produces every chemical that you can get from anything else, whether it's a stimulant, Come on. whether it's a hallucinogen. Mm -hmm. So, but from my understanding, the only way to um, relax the mind is meditation. Meditation. That's it. But you know, you know, you know, cannabis is a muscle relaxer. It relaxes the whole body. That's the only problem. Right. <laughs> it relaxes the whole body. You know, it relaxes the brain too. You know what I mean? So, so the whole body, the brain is not. Is that a? It's not a holistic drug because it damages your lungs, but you know, it, it'll be good for your brain. So it's like. It's it's one of those things. Yeah. Like, don't you want protein? You gotta eat beef. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. According to a recent, let me let me just make sure I'm um, cause I um, I'm gonna have to have my scribe come up here, cause it's not numbered. Proceed. You know what I'm at the end. I would like to make a smooth transition into it. <laughs> It's recording. Here you go. Here you go. Thank you. That's where I was. All right. Um, does alcohol actually kill brain cells? According to a recent article in Scientific American Mind, drinking alcohol does not kill brain cells, although it can damage them. Ah, so they're saying it doesn't kill it. It just damages them. Okay. Let's see. Did you do um, this on here? Yeah, this is not it. All right, here we go. Try to find the orders. Specifically, it can damage the dendrites of neurons. Dendrites are specialized protrusions of neurons which bring information into the cell body. Thus, damaging the dendrites can cause problems in the relaying of information between the brain cells. You know, and we've seen that. I don't know if you can uh, sing that song right quick, Earth, you know, for the baby. Okay. Um, Let's see. If I remember all of it, it's We like, have a song. Yeah, 
Use your dendrites. Use your dendrites to connect throughout your brain. Take it in, fall, analyze it. Grow some new ones unrestrained. Hey. Ax and send it out. Neurotransmitters through the dendrites all around. Across the synapse jumps the impulse. New ideas can now abound. Woo! <laughs> Drink some alcohol and you damage it. Now you can't. You know what I'm saying? You gotta add that. You know what I'm saying? So we think we, I mean, we think we be all right with a lot of stuff we do because we're trained like that in this society, particularly, you know, you heavy um, under television and music and, you know, you think it's all good. But again, we're talking about cells. We're talking about electromagnetic fields. We're talking about information being restricted from moving as swiftly as possible. And we wonder why we're dysfunctional mm -hmm. as a people, as a community, you know, as a nation, completely mm -hmm. dysfunctional, you know? Substance abuse has damaged us in ways that we can't even imagine. Thus, the damaging the dendrites can cause problems in the relaying of information between the brain cells. This damage particularly occurs in the cerebellum which is the part of the brain concerned with learning and motor coordination. According to Dr. Petney, however, this damage is not permanent, yet it can cause changes in neural structure. So, they're saying it's not permanent, but can cause changes in neural structure. I'll let you decide what that means to you. Right. But to me, that's saying it's changing my brain. You know what I mean? My brain that was grown naturally through nature, these different substances are actually changing my brain. Okay, not only is it stopping it from functioning at its highest efficiency, but it's changing my brain itself. Petney also stresses that losing entire brain cells isn't necessary to disrupt brain function. In fact, brain cell damage will also have a disrupting effect. So perhaps the question we should really be asking is not does alcohol kill brain cells, but what damage does drinking alcohol do to the brain? Mm. AB, ABC Science, Dr. Carl's Great Moments in Science. Why does drinking alcohol cause dehydration? Okay, and I haven't done a class on water per se, but I don't think I have to convince anybody in here about the importance of water. You know, and I'm sure I have a few other things that can, you know, convince you how important water is even more. Um, over time, too much alcohol can set off diabetes and malnutrition and diseases of the central nervous system and the liver. Importance of the liver, again, when we combine these things, so not just things like drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, but then we're combining these things. So most of us that drink or have ever drink, it seems like cigarette and a drink just go together. They like partners, right? right? But we understand the purpose of the liver is to remove toxins from the body, right? So if we're damaging and pickling the liver, now, now you're not able to remove those toxins that you're putting in, but you can't remove the everyday toxins that your liver has to, you know, get rid of for within your body. So pickling your liver is, you might need it. A short-term side effect is excessive urination. But even today, we still don't fully understand how alcohol causes excessive urination. I disagree. We're going to talk about it. They act like they don't know. But we know. You say you disagree with that? Yep. That they don't know. Or that maybe they don't know. But I'm saying I do know. Okay. And we're going to say why. All right. What's going on with my order, Earth? I was still sleeping. Alcohol interferes with the mechanism that regulates the water levels in our body. So now a little anatomy and physiology. That was a nice catch right there. Not that one. Next week, maybe the PowerPoint. You have, where's the tape? Okay. <clears throat> in your brain is a small gland called the pituitary gland. It is divided into two sections, the front and the back. The back section is called the posterior pituitary. One of the hormones made by the posterior 
pituitary gland is called vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone. Duracis is a fancy word meaning urination. So a diuretic is something that helps you urinate. So if you're producing an antidiuretic hormone, then you're not urinating. Very simple. Well, let's see what alcohol actually does. All right. Now suppose that you are really dehydrated. So the volume of water in your body is low, but you still have so many salts floating in this reduced volume of water. These salts are now more concentrated in the reduced volume of water that you have when you are dehydrated. Your body has detectors that can sense both the saltiness of your water and the volumes of the water. If these detectors reckon that you are dehydrated, they send a signal to the posterior pituitary gland, which starts pumping out the ADD, ADH, which is the antidiuretic hormone. The job of ADH is to stop you urinating so, so you hang on to your precious water. You reduce your normal rate of making urine. Alcohol does the opposite. Alcohol does the opposite. So the chemicals that produce the ADH or the antidiuretic hormone, alcohol actually stops that production from happening. Therefore, you urinate more. It reduces how much, AD, how much ADH you make, so it increases how much urine you produce. Now, when it was talking about not knowing why it does this, if we understand alcohol, we understand what's actually in the urine, right? Your urea is nitrogen. Simple as that. It's nitrogen. So the alcohol, which is going to produce nitrogen in the body, right? Your urea cycle is what helps rid the nitrogen out of your body. And of course, we as original people, it affects us even more. Because we do not want high levels of nitrogen in our body. All right, a little crooked, you know. <laughs> you don't want to get fired in the other. All right, here we go. Still a little crooked. Shot of alcohol that you drink forces your kidneys to generate extra 120 milliliters of urine on top of the normal 60 to 80 milliliters per hour. Aha! You clearly think of yourself. You clearly think to yourself, why don't I just drink lots of water to compensate for the extra 120 milliliters? Unfortunately, it is not that simple. You'll hang on to only about half or a third of the extra water you drink. Most of it will go out, at, go out in your urine and you'll still end up dehydrated at the end of the night of drinking. Which is very true because when I was at uh, Surge Gym, which is on, you know, was on 145th and Lenox where the House of Justice is now Al Sharpton, I was, you know, in there with bodybuilders. I managed the gym and everybody was getting big, right? So I was like, all right, you know, I got to start getting big. You know, I'm lifting weights. You know, so I started drinking all the protein shakes. And the guy there who actually owned the gym, he was like, listen, man, you're just going to piss it all out anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was like, you're just going to piss it all out anyway. So even though you think, like, we're drinking water, right, after you've drunk, you know, get drunk or have drinking a lot of alcohol, you think that drinking a lot of water is going to prevent you from being dehydrated. However, you're just going to urine it out anyway because your body is constantly trying to get rid of the nitrogen. Okay? And your body is constantly trying to get rid of nitrogen and alcohol. Like I went to a, um, was at a tattoo parlor. And most people think, I don't want to say most people, but according to the tattooists, most people think, you know, you come in drunk. That kind of helps the effect. And they, they don't advise you to get your tattoo while being drunk. Because first of all, the ink that you're putting into your system, your body is already trying to push it out. Your blood is already trying to push it out. And I've seen certain tattoos and you lose a lot of the ink, you know, within the first maybe 24 hours because that's your blood pushing out the toxins, okay? So they tell you when you drink alcohol, your body actually is pushing out more toxins, thus you're losing more of the ink of the tattoo, okay? So that's just another way showing you that your body is constantly trying to get rid of this stuff. And it's nitrogen. 
Mind you, you'll be a bit better off than if you didn't drink any extra water at all. Right? Common sense. But you'll still be dehydrated. Could this extra urination caused by alcohol consumption be the origin of the old Aussie expression, a night on the piss? And maybe Europeans are saying that they don't know why this is happening because they're more compatible to nitrogen. They are more nitrogen based. Okay? So they're like, you know, what's the problem? And that's why it doesn't affect them as much. It affects us greater. Two reasons. Of course, the melanin, which absorbs toxins and then re-releases it throughout the system. And then the nitrogen that it produces in the body. And your urea cycle, you know, you go and do some homework on urine and urea. It's the body trying to get rid of nitrogen. Okay, so the fact that they didn't put those two things together, it can only be a nitrogen-based individual to not have put those two things together. Therapist.com, Stanford School of Medicine, University of Connecticut, uh, University of Connecticut. Even mild dehydration can alter mood, okay? Mild dehydration symptoms. And these are very simple things that we keep in mind as we on our everyday travels. These are very simple things. A lot of people think that they're suffering from great diseases and um, depressions and taking all types of pills. And a lot of times you're just dehydrated. You just need some water. You know what I mean? And then even worse, we drinking all types of... Our body is telling us we're thirsty and then we're going for something that's going to make us more dehydrated. We running to get a Pepsi. 